is policy day uh, at the summit, and we have an amazing um, uh, sort of array of, of speakers to put in front of you today. And, and um, I am so honored and, and thrilled that Chancellor Nancy Zimfer is here uh, to kick off the day uh, uh, for us. Um, um, I have an, a bio here, a short bio, to just for those in the room who may not know, you know, the details. She's our t 12th chancellor um, in, uh, in this largest comprehensive system of higher education. And since that time, she's been a vocal advocate for groundbreaking legislative reforms that ensure SUNY can provide broad access to higher education in an environment uh, of declining state support where maximizing its impact is an engine of economic development throughout the state. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to you, Nancy. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so, uh, first of all, we're very privileged to have so many uh, really smart people joining us from agencies and, and uh, institutions uh, uh, the Department of Education. It, it's really a thrill to have the kind of input that Alex and your Mighty Mighty Conference Planning Team have, have put together. And, and just for those of you who are our guests, yeah, we do know we have a chancellor and, and most of us have seen each other somewhere, uh, either on video or in person. Uh, but we're big. We are huge. And we've been doing some calculation about our reach, and I think Alex and others have <laughs> contributed to this. Um, we start with 465,000 students who are credit-bearing students, but by the time you tabulate the non-credit-bearing students, Fred, you'll help me with this, uh, you up that number to like 750,000, and then you add in continuing education, and you're about two, uh, excuse me, two million, you skip right up from a half a million to two million, and then uh, probably uh, a bit of a reach, but if you look at all the individuals educationally served by cooperative extension out of our Cornell Statutory College, it's three million. Three million New Yorkers, largely New Yorkers, but increasingly beyond our boundaries who are served by the State University of New York. And that number resonates with the three million alumni who have grown up with the State University of New York. Uh, and I do think for our friend from Pepperdine, what does set us apart is that we are a combination of USC, the community colleges, and UC under one umbrella. And it gives us immense opportunity. It's a, it's a really dynamic uh, system, and uh, many of us already know we put a word on Wikipedia uh, three or four years ago called systemness. Uh, Stephen Colbert, I think it was, that made up truthiness, and uh, we just followed his lead. The uh, whole is greater than the sum of the parts, and um, last year we had a national conference on collective impact, trying to understand that by working more collectively and collaboratively, we really can move the dial. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Carrie. I'm traveling with Stacy Hingsterman. She is of uh, the generation where she never puts down that Blackberry. But I know she's multitasking, I'm sure. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are actually on our way to the uh, Syracuse Post Standard to meet with the editorial board. And following that meeting, we're going to have a student speak out, which I will explain momentarily. Okay, I got about 12 minutes now. I blew three just on that. Um, and I want to congratulate you. I'm well aware that this is the first annual convening of the Center of Online Teaching Excellence. And that last year was our transition. And I believe I was there for the transition. Remind me, were we in New York? I'm not sure. Okay. So um, because this is policy day, I'm just going to frame our existing, at the moment, policy agenda for the State University of New York. For our friends uh, who are visiting us, this is budget season for New York, and it all begins when the governor gives his State of the State address. Typically, he gives it early, the first Wednesday of, in January. I mean, it's by the books. And then several weeks later, he gives an executive budget address. 
due to the passing of his renowned father, Mario uh, Cuomo. Uh, all of that was pushed back three weeks and combined. And then we, uh, now he has 2,000 people in a convention center in Albany who listen to his remarks. We are in a thing called the Egg, which is much smaller. We can fill a room that way. Uh, we still don't have standing room only, but we do the State of the University address following the governor's address, hoping that we can get a video clip where he strings together State University of New York, the greatest, the best dynamic system in the country, and then we follow by saying, and this is how we're going to implement uh, the ideas that the governor has put forward. So uh, that all culminates in a budget request by the State University of New York. So while it's a budget request, you know that you follow the money to find out what matters most. And so our ideas are embedded in our budget request, not just about the money, it's about our priorities. So this year, the world is divided into two pathways. One pathway essentially called maintaining our base. This is what you hear by university presidents and system heads all over the country. It's the base aid that we get from the state to support our work. It also uh, comprises what our capital, capital investment will be. We're a huge infrastructure at the State University of New York. You live in our capital facilities. Uh, one of the uh, uh, exciting things about the State of New York, it, is all, it has more recently embraced a five-year capital plan. I usually say you can't build a building one floor at a time. Let's go with the basement this year, and we'll see if the state will allocate the lobby next year. It uh, doesn't work that way. So in our maintaining the base is our base aid for our community colleges. I'm, I'm told that you're all here. Uh, uh, this concept of rolling over our tuition plan, we call it rational tuition because it's affordable, fair, predictable, our students support it, uh, and have in the past, and we're asking for an increased capital investment. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor set the table nicely. He uh, put $200 million into his budget for our capital plan. Uh, the problem is we need $600 million. So, uh, you know, we're just pushing the ball down the road with a little bit more money, and uh, we do believe that our students are positioning themselves to um, support uh, rolling over our rational tuition if and as if and as the state of New York agrees to make some new investments in SUNY. So that's the other pathway that I really want to spend a few minutes on because it's where Open SUNY and the digital uh, initiatives that we are framing fits in. How could we put such a stake in the ground for New York State's investment in the State University of New York that is unequivocal and irresistible? Make a proposal to the state that it simply cannot afford not to fund. Following that double negative, here we go. What is it that we most need to do that could significantly move the dial for the State of New York? And we settled, we settled on a formula we've been talking about for the last three or four years called A plus C equals S. I know I've talked with you about this before. It's really continuing our commitment to access, making sure that every student who comes completes a degree or a certificate, and make sure that those students end successfully in a career path. But as simple as that formula is, it's too complicated for public policy. It's got three words in it. And we got to narrow it down to one word. So we have organized ourselves around the completion agenda. And we have calculated that we know what works. We know how to bring down the need for remediation. We know how our online offerings through Open SUNY make more degrees available, make more required courses available to students when they need those courses. We know that works. We know that if we can offer every one of our students an, an applied learning opportunity, that that will help secure, first of all, the combination of theory and practice, and second, will set them on a pathway to a, a happy and lucrative career. 
And those are just three of the examples of what we know works. So we're trying to say to the state, we've gotten really smart about what works, but we've not been able to take what works to scale. So let's take Quantway Statway, which is alive and well in Westchester Community College and Rockland Community College. We now have 10 more community colleges that want to do this remedial math intervention that gets you to college level math faster and smarter. So we're saying to the state, if it's working in two or three campuses, maybe we can get it to work in all 30 of our community colleges. If we have fantastic internships and co-op experiences, which we do at Binghamton or Oswego or UB or Stony Brook, what if we could offer that across the board? If we have uh, wave one and wave two of Open SUNY, Alex and Carrie, if I've got the language right, what if we could go full on with wave three and take our online opportunities to scale? If we do that, we have calculated that our current graduation uh, supply at 93,000 students could potentially grow over the next five years to 150,000 graduates a year. To make a statement like this, we've had to say, we're good, but we're not good enough. If our six-year graduation rate hovers around 62 or 63 percent, and we want it to be 100 percent, we're good, but we're not good enough. There's something kind of charming about a university conceding that it's terrific, but it's not quite terrific enough. The state is wonderful. We graduate 74 percent of our high school students, but we leave 26% behind. We're good, but we're not good enough. So we are asking the state to invest $50 million this year and every year till 2020 so that we can offer the state 60,000 more graduates a year. This is the first time in the recent history of the State University of New York where we have been so emboldened to say, we know what works, you have got to help us take it to scale. That's what we're going to tell the Syracuse Post Standard. That's what we told the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle uh, a few days ago. The presidents of our SUNY campuses in Syracuse had a press conference. I think we're getting ready to have one, Stacy, in Binghamton. Uh, we're working very hard in Buffalo. We've been to Long Island. Uh, the North Country is dying to have us, and when they thaw out, we'll be there. Um, so uh, actually, Jefferson County Community College, I think, stepped right up and said, we'll do a press release. We've had about eight of these student speakouts where we ask the students to tell us that they need more of what works, and that's been just fabulous, and that's what we're doing today at, e at, at ESF. And we've even started having alumni speak outs, and I think we're getting ready to have our fourth one uh, in New Pulse uh, next week or the, or the week after. I actually have no idea where I am today, but I do know that Stacy's got me on a campaign, and we are telling our story and taking uh, a bit of a risk uh, to make such an ambitious ask of our governor and our legislature. But in return, we're going to give them more uh, qualified uh, members of our workforce. And of course, I hope you see where Open SUNY and online learning can be a major vehicle of our success. And we will be asking to take more of our, that's why I'm calling it wave three of our Open SUNY offerings to scale. So this investment fund has your fingerprints all over it. We will, if we get the funds, be competitive. We'll be asking campuses to, to say, we know how to do this. Uh, it would be nice if those campuses would bring a few more campuses along with them. There would be some kind of a competitive process. Uh, this is not uh, you know, to buy a new car fleet for SUNY Central. This is your money 
uh, distributed in a competitive fashion to do what we know works. So Alex, I'm going to stop there. This is as fast as I can put our uh, SUNY policy on the table, but I certainly would take questions or advice. Right, Stacy? Advice. How does this sound to you? Okay, who has the first question? <laughs> or advice, remember. Do you see that we could use some of this investment fund to expand our online opportunities? And I guess what would be helpful is you begin to think as if we're going to get these funds, what would that next horizon be for you? <laughs> That's the difference between Stacy's job and my job. Right? Yeah, anybody? Yeah. Hi there, coming. Hi, I'm Vicki Sloan from Clinton Community College. Hello. And, um, I, I think that your ideas about the student speak out is great, but what about a faculty speak out? Because apparently our governor doesn't seem to know what community college faculty do. And um, to say that we have exorbitant tuition is just a slap in the face to me and to many of my colleagues. I think that if he could um, get a you know, better understanding of what goes on, um, on the community college campuses, we might have a better chance with him. Well, um, one of the um, things we do do on a regular basis, uh, I meet, as you know, with the University Faculty Senate quarterly and uh, the Faculty Council of the community colleges. And so I personally have a great opportunity to hear what's on the minds of, of our faculty leaders, and I value it greatly. And um, there are a few hiccups in the uh, executive budget and the rhetoric around it that we might wish had been framed differently. Uh, and it, it um, I'm in more of a position to have to navigate that. Uh, I'd like to say the nerve, but you know that really doesn't uh, get the job done, and I know you appreciate that. And we've also been trying to even help how how your leaders in the community colleges, and quite frankly, um, I'll say this just so you don't feel alone, we are thrilled that the governor supports applied learning and that he put it in his uh, executive budget. That's the really good news. The bad news is he chose the word mandate. So those of you who are with the University Faculty Senate know that I had an early uh, roasting uh, a few weeks ago um, because we let that happen. Well, of course, we didn't let that happen, but it happens. These things happen. And what you try to find is the good in, uh, I say to Stacy when I'm in these editorial boards, it's okay, Stacy. you can say to them what the chancellor meant to say. <laughs> it's okay, you can correct me, you can override me, yeah, I don't care, let's get it right. And so we wish uh, it had been framed differently, but if, uh, Stacy. The uh, state of the state for us was a little, you know, that took us by surprise. It took the wind out of our sails, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot with the governor's office, but if you read what they wrote in the book, it's not so bad for our community <laughs> colleges. What happened in those few slides is like a blur and a buzzing right now because it was wrong. It's not training, you know, uh, community college students for jobs that don't exist. I don't think that we do that. Um, the community college tuition is higher than the national average. I think everybody would like the community college tuition to go down a little bit. Um, the retention rates aren't as, you know, strong as the chancellor says we could do a little bit better. I think the governor is supportive of community colleges, but got a little bit too much on the rhetoric there, and we asked them to tone it down, and they did. Um, and I think we'll see some. I think we'll see some base aid and some support in the budget. We kind of have to stop repeating what he said. Because we're just telling our own, we're yeah. saying the bad stuff. Ironically, so I everybody, yeah. shh, don't say it anymore. <laughs> don't write it. Let's pretend it didn't happen. It's not written down anywhere. And um, you know, but. Yeah. Any other advice? Hi, Janet. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I'm glad to see you here. I wanted to simply. I was not at the Senate meeting to which you refer, but I am a strong uh, supporter of experiential education. And I wanted to thank you 
You're bringing that home to the online community here too. I think we can be very good partners. I also wanted to thank you for making us partners with our state government more than we ever have been. So that was perhaps a hiccup. I wasn't there. But I think your ideas are right on. And we here would like to help, and all our faculty would like to help too. I like the idea of having faculty join your group of supporters. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And I, um, I think it, uh, we've tried to take this uh, applied learning approach uh, in a very diversified way. There are internships and co-ops that are career related, but we also have a whole slew of students who do volunteerism and service learning, and service learning is documented in course experiences, as you know. I can see how applied learning absolutely fits into our online offerings, and I know you're working hard at mediating uh, what can, people would say couldn't possibly be done. But you know, when we sold Open SUNY to broader audiences, we said applied learning will be a part of that. And then the third bucket in this umbrella of applied learning opportunities is serving in a research lab or in an entrepreneurial opportunity or some of these startup businesses that are coming to our campuses. So I think if you look at the broad array of opportunities, the big problem is finding a digital way to manage it all. And uh, you know, I have a no better metaphor, but it's a little bit like online dating. You know, we need a massive system of connectivity, and then we need to be able to package in some ways the digital components. So there is so much room in this completion agenda for what you do. And I think, uh, given the time I've had this morning, the message I would want to leave with is. By getting focused on completion, by cutting out all the noise around everything else we do, which is amazing, we can move the completion dial. And we need all hands on deck. And I, I really relish the opportunity to spend a few minutes just saying that to you in person, because you are in this book of opportunity. and. Uh, the coincidence, I don't know which came first, coat or this post standard, but it all came together and here we are and it gave me a chance to say hello and to thank you for your work. Yes, hi. Good morning, Chancellor. Greg Ketchum from SUNY Oswego. Could we talk for a moment actually about access because I think access is very important in terms of bringing us to the discussion about completion. I'm sure you're aware of this, but I think one thing that would have a significant positive impact for us in terms of increasing access to online learning is a discussion about tuition on two different realms. One, of course, is in-state versus out-of-state tuition rates for a student who is 100% online. If we were able to offer an in-state rate to students who are outside the boundaries of New York State, that obviously increases our market opportunity. And the okay. second opportunity that's also very interesting, where we're at a competitive disadvantage, has to do with the military and the tuition assistance cap. Uh, the amount of remitted tuition that active duty or veterans can get, there's a cap that's set, obviously, within the military. Many of our competitors in the private sector can hit that level. So military personnel, active duty veterans don't incur any personal debt in terms of earning a degree. And unfortunately, SUNY isn't in the position to be able to do that. So pointing out those two areas, yeah. which could be areas for improvement, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we've uh, tiptoed into border tuition. And several of our institutions on the borders, uh, Pennsylvania, Canada, Vermont, are, are interested. Uh, and so we're trying to sort of manage that because we can't get ahead of our legislative uh, position, if you will. And I also think that the state has looked to SUNY to lead in veteran policies. I mean, we're the ones who, who put a stake in the ground in that regard. differential tuition, which the state doesn't allow. But this, we think, these are good issues. Um, we are talking with a few campuses about border state for out-of-state tuition, lowering it a little bit. Um, online is uh, an area that I think we will, we will try to do this year. I 
I think we're going to do it after the budget because we are trying to extend our rational tuition program um, to 2020 and we don't want to muddy up that, those waters. So this could be good legislation. The veteran thing is a no-brainer. Um, I think we're over by like 25 bucks is what I understand, right? It's a very small amount that we can't you know, just say you're covered. So I think it's very good legislation and I would just want the group to talk about one of the things about online we were worried about discounting that tuition or lowering that tuition as it gave the impression that it was less expensive to, uh, to be an online student, and we weren't sure we were ready to kind of make that leap. So I would like any feedback on that, but I think for out-of-state that you're saying is good, um, you know, take it to in-state, but we don't want to put it out there that it's a cheaper way to get educated. So that's what we're kind of holding off on. But any advice on that? But I think we'll Any more advice? Hello. Hi, I'm Ed from Cayuga. Um, just following up on what Greg said, if we ever can get to an out-of-state issue with online education, it would be nice that when I turn on the TV, instead of seeing Walden and Phoenix or Southern New Hampshire University or now Arizona State University, advertising nationally for their online programs that SUNY could be there? But we well, have to fix the out-of-state tuition issue. Yeah, we do, but we also, uh, it would really help us to have a marketing and communications budget. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, in the Arizona State, let's talk about uh, an institution that looks more like SUNY than the for-profit organizations, or even the way in which Southern New Hampshire has boxed in its online learnings for uh, instruction delivered by other than regular faculty. I may have that a little bit wrong, but I think it's really sort of a corporate opportunity that doesn't look like our mainstream offerings, which I'm so very proud of. Um, we are uh, shamelessly looking for our Starbucks. Uh, recall that Arizona State uh, sealed, uh, inked a deal with Starbucks. Uh, I think it was probably publicized more uh, extensively than in reality, but we've had some conversations with Global Foundries, with National Grid, uh, that we could really do a great online service to their employees. We could have it very focused uh, in what their needs are, uh, and I think if we got a few of those partnerships, we'd have a little scratch to put ourselves uh, on the marketing campaign that um, uh, other places either have more liberty to do. You know, we're highly regulated. Highly, well, you're seeing this with Sarah. We're highly regulated. And um, even if we had the money, there's certain limitations to what we could do given higher ed policies in New York. But I agree with you and I have to say, however, that when I'm in other states traveling and Startup New York comes on, I know how it must feel to, you know, to them because I know what it feels like to me when I hear these other marketing campaigns for online. But we're working on it and we know we need to do more. So thank you for that. Everybody okay for now? Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.